what works. Language, literacy and numeracy in training and assessment. The best way to encourage um, good learning skills in your classroom is to be a good teacher, in fact. Encourage learners to ask questions. No question is a silly question. All the best learners ask questions regularly. Well, when I do ask them to ask questions about things, there's usually a dead silence. So I get them to speak to the person next to them and ask, uh, talk about the types of questions they could ask. Or sometimes in small groups, they feel more comfortable working in pairs or small groups. And then we get the group to present the question so that it's not too much pressure on them and that they don't have a sense of failure because it's a group situation. In a vet classroom, you're working with adults, um, often mature age adults. Adults have experiences of their own and um, refer to those. Let the learners bring their whole selves into the classroom um, and, and build on their strengths, build on what they know, give them confidence. By using the knowledge that they know and encouraging them to share the knowledge they have, like Christina, when we asked about syllables, the word syllable and what it means, she very happily shared that she knows that it's a Greek word and she is from Greece and she knows that it means brain breaking up words into small words and she shared it very openly with the rest of the group and that I think makes the rest of the group feel comfortable enough to share their knowledge and to realise that everybody's input is important as well as mine. So it's actually bringing it down to grassroots level where they can understand because of their own experiences so you're connecting to knowledge that they have already have and then building and developing on top of that. If you can't do that, I think that it's, um, you kind of may as well go home, <laughs> really. Once we start developing those skills, and we don't throw our students in the deep end and expect them to do any complex planning from day one, we will actually walk them through, step them through the planning process. We will prompt them as to what they have to write down and why they should do it. Uh, eventually what we do, we start leaving steps out and they have to fill in the missing steps. Uh, to the point that we would expect them to be able to give us a reasonably good plan on a task that they have to do. We've got to try and educate them that there isn't going to be somebody standing beside them giving them the answer all the time. We try to make them independent, independent thinkers. Um, so we give them uh, a range of places that they could source information, whether that be an internet search or whether it be picking up the phone and um, asking for some information from a particular supplier or a particular company. Once they get into that mindset that they can solve the problem, they're taking that one step further and they're looking at their activities here and possibly their day-to-day -day work and they're solving other problems as they go. Doing something once, nobody ever learns it. Doing something a couple of times brings it to become a procedure or a process that we learn to follow and we're all creatures of process and habit and if we learn something by a process, then we get there, so practice makes it work. Vocational training is for everybody. It's, it's part of lifelong learning. It's not just the workplace, it's, it's the whole person. And the self-esteem that learners get from realising that they can do things, they can read and write better than they could, their literacy and numeracy is going to be good enough to do that job, uh, is, is fabulous.